Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you how to secure Windows 7. Now, the first thing I recommend doing when you want to secure Windows 7 is to get a firewall. And you can easily use the built-in Windows firewall. It's fairly basic. Um, it doesn't really... There's really nothing you can configure. You can't really configure very much stuff. I don't think you can stealth the ports. It doesn't have a host based intrusion prevention system. And I don't know. It's it's pretty good. I'd say it's good for most people. Now the firewall I recommend and it's also the best firewall I've really ever found. And on modisec.com it's actually the highest rated one and it's also free which is very nice because it's actually better than mo all of the paid solutions according to Modisec. I'll put a link to it in the video well actually I'll just go to it right now Sick. um... as you can see wait as you can see it is the highest rated firewall According to them, it's even better than well. Nor Norden is actually really bad, and, and Zone Alarm, and all these. I haven't heard of some of these, but I mean, you know, you definitely don't want to use this one. And this one's paid, you know. I mean, I really highly recommend Komodo. It's very good. Some of the nice things that you can do is you can stealth the ports, and you can, as this is the host-based intrusion prevention system. It's called Defense Plus. You can configure it how to your, to your liking. You can sandbox applications easily, and overall, it's just it's very good. And here I'll show you an example of. It also gives you alerts. I'll show you an example of what the alerts look like, like this. And since I was actually uninstalling Cam Studio to get Cam Tassia, I think it's called. This is what it, the alert was, so I hit submit to Komodo for analysis so they could look it over just so maybe it will get added to their database of known safe applications or something. I figured it might help them out and then I just hit allow because I knew it was the uninstaller for Camtasia. Now if this was something I didn't know about I could just hit block and that's one of the nice features of the Defense Plus, uh, Komodo's Defense Plus and you can also click on each of these and it will give you the properties page or well, the properties window for each of the applications so you can look at it. It also it can assist you in answering here and there, which is very nice. Now, the other thing you're going to want is antivirus. And there's basically two, it was just paid and unpaid, well, there's, yeah, paid and unpaid antivirus. I use unpaid antivirus because uh, I think it's good enough for most people personally, especially if you use multiple layers of security, because security is like an onion, it has layers. And so, I just recommend Microsoft Security Essentials. If you really want to, just get the best antivirus you can, spend $50 or whatever it is, it's not very much. Then just go and look up PC World, best number one antivirus, and then for whatever year it is, it's 2012 right now, as you can see, so and look at PC World Best Antivirus 2012 or Best Paid. Right now I'm just using Microsoft Security Essentials. It's just free antivirus. It works fine. fine. And I haven't gotten a virus. Yeah, I've had it. Um, um yeah. So the next thing I can talk about is Firefox. I recommend it. You use it for web browsing along with Sandboxy and it will sandbox your applications. So you just start Firefox in Sandboxy so it's running in a secure environment. And Firefox is fairly secure, I guess you would say out of the box. But some of the things I like to do is go into the privacy panel and hit and then change it, change these privacy settings to my liking, change the security settings to my liking. You know, I like to accept cookies from sites but delete them and when I close Firefox I like to keep my history that's just how I like it and 
I also like to tell websites I do not want to be tracked. And yeah, just you know, you, I I think that's a good way to configure it securely is to delete all the cookies when you close it to prevent third-party tracking cookies. And I also recommend the no script add-on for Firefox, which it blocks scripts like Flash and stuff like that, and then you just allow it, like if you want to watch YouTube videos, allow YouTube.com, but you can block Google Analytics and stuff like that. And I also recommend an ad blocker, just to block ads, it really helps the browsing experience in my opinion. I also like Ghostry, I'll kind of show you that, I'll Google something and wait till it pops and block in. I know YouTube has a tracking thing. There, see I have it set up to block double click, which is I think yeah, and then you can see what it is. Like you can see Google's double click products provide and manage at an ad serving solutions to companies that create or sell online advertising. So I don't I don't want to be tracked by that, so I can just hit block. That's very nice. These are some of the add ons I recommend. Oh, I also recommend start page as a search engine. I think that it's very nice. It's an anonymous search engine. It uses SSL encryption. It's very nice. Um, so that's it for Firefox for well, security add-on and add-on ones. Um, yeah, just run in the sandbox, use those plugins. I haven't had any issues with it. And another thing we could talk about is SpyBot Search and Destroy. That's, we'll talk about Emet later. Um, so, basically what SpyBot Search and Destroy does, you can kind of tell by the name, it's just an on-demand spyware scanner, and also you can use it to em immunize your browsers. It supports and configures them securely. It supports Firefox and Internet Explorer. And I also recommend when you emu well yeah, it, I guess it automatically does this. It uh, edits your host's file and it adds, it blocks, basically just blocks bad websites that if you go to them they'll, keep, they'll get malware. Another thing I recommend is that you use OpenDNS. OpenDNS basically does the same thing that SpyBot Search and Destroy does by blocking websites. But instead of doing it in the host file, you configure them to be your DNS servers. And this can also actually speed up your internet connection, if that's something you'd like to do. I'm assuming most people do that. Um, so, yeah, these are the, so you just go into here and you click use the following DNS servers, instead of obtaining them automatically and configure it to use OpenDNS as DNS servers. You can also find these, I, these IP addresses on their website. The nice thing about OpenDNS is, like I said, again, like I said, it blocks those bad websites, and if you ever get malware, the malware would try to go to all these bad websites and just pull in more malware onto your computer to make it even worse. So, that's one thing I recommend. And another thing I recommend doing is creating system recovery disks. So if your computer won't even boot, you can recover your computer. Basically, you can just pop it in the CD drive, and if you need to, you configure the BIOS to boot from CD before hard drive, and then you boot from the CD, and then you install Windows back, and then you have Windows back with all the drivers and everything, which is very nice. Another thing I recommend is using a backup service like Komodo's backup service. I think Google does, Microsoft has one too, I think. No, even a, like on Ubuntu Linux, they have Ubuntu One, which you can use to back up. And I think all these have like five to eight gigabytes of free storage, which is nice if you need to back up some files. But I do recommend encrypting them first with something like TrueCrypt. And another thing I recommend doing. Oh, that was just Windows. It's telling me that since I'm recording, it kind of slows down my computer a bit. So it's telling me that I should change the the color scheme or whatever to a less resource intensive one. But okay, so 
another thing I recommend doing is like when I do want to do something that requires administrative privileges, you it asks for a password. And how you do this is you open up the control panel, you search users, you click add or remove user accounts, and then you just create. A, this is my standard user account. You can if you click that, it will let you create one. And this is my administrator account. So whenever I need to do something that requires an administrator account, it makes me log into this administrator account on this account, but it doesn't really keep. I just so I'm still in this account, but it requires this one's password to be able to do anything that requires an administrative any administrative actions, which is very nice. Um, another thing I recommend doing if you I can't figure out how to get this to work with multi-boot systems. But you can install a program called TrueCrypt, and what TrueCrypt does is you can use it to encrypt files if you're worried someone will try to access your computer, which, you know, I'd say that's a good thing to do. You can also encrypt your entire hard drive, so that way they can't even access the system files. And this is good because, like, when you browse, some, you know, they still have those leftover files in the system so people can still kind of get information but you'll still have your main files secure. I recommend full hard drive encryption but you can also do just encrypt certain files. Um Ah, Windows. Not bad. Okay, um next thing I recommend doing is if you ever like you see something weird happen, you get a weird pop up, and you you know it's a virus. Just type system restore, and um, basically what this does is you can restore your system back a few days, and you can choose a restore point. Like if I wanted to restore it from the 26th, and I got a virus today just to be safe. And then I just run a scan with Microsoft Security Essentials and Malware Bytes. You know, I've never really had to do this. I've actually never really gotten a virus before. But, yeah. Next thing I recommend is getting Microsoft EMET. I'm pretty sure this... I don't know a ton about it, but yes, yeah, Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit. And it basically stops processes from being ex like program vulnerabilities and programs from being exploited into giving the attacker access to the system it kind of contains them and you can configure it how you like like you can configure it for like for structured exception handler uh, overwrite protection i'm not really sure what that is but i'll have to look it up later I'm pretty sure it has something to do with exception handling and programming and it's probably some sort of vulnerability that can be exploited that's my guess and you can configure it to application opt-in or application opt-out I like to configure it for maximum security settings which is this and then if you want to add an application then you just kind of well you just like if I want to add task host, I see oh it's C slash Windows slash System32 slash task host. Hit configure apps, add that, go to C System32. Oh uh, well, I always forget actually. <laughs> I think it was Windows, but yeah. System32 and then task host. I'm not gonna do it. I don't really. I try to not add system stuff. I usually add stuff like Firefox and. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out whether or not it's safe, and I'm going to make a video on it once I learn more. Um, let me think. The next thing I would recommend would be to get an on-demand scanner like Malwarebytes, and also to just use common sense. Like, don't download an application and then run the installer as administrator if you don't even you don't even know what it is. Maybe research the application, see what people on forums, like just look it up, you usually get forum posts and just reviews and stuff, and if you just read those reviews, look at multiple websites, it's usually safe if multiple people on multiple websites are recommending it, 
Well, actually, in my experience, it's always been safe from malware and viruses as far as I know. I mean, I've never really seen anything bad happen. I mean, my usage, my CPU usage and stuff stayed, always stayed the same. And Yeah, was, I'd say the security method is actually very good. Um, I'm trying to think if I forgot something. Um, I'll also make sure you keep your system up to date. And also and your applications up to date. Ah, what's that message again? Um, it always stops when I stop recording. Um, I'd say the last thing you really want to do is just make sure you run unfamiliar applications in Sandboxy. Or just run every application in Sandboxy if you really just want to be completely safe. And again, just use common sense. Thank, for, thank you for watching this video.